Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick. Nick. Dr. Nick, this malpractice committee has received a few complaints against you. That's, of course, The Simpsons, and today's show does dive into what some people see as medical quackery and what other people see as cutting-edge conspiracy science. Here's a clip. Published in Nature three years ago, again, in 2016. In 2016, he was on this. He can give you all the stats on the camels and how many of the camels had the virus and how many of the camels had the 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 antibodies and then you know so he's been doing that work for 10 years so he so didn't show me just the picture show you the picture your Here's name the... is alex right alex right now show me the picture of the isolated virus show, <laughs> show flat, it to me flat you said you believe earth, this guy show me the picture flat earth science that's what the flat earth guys do. They say, hey, I've, I can't see the, the rent. Show me, show me. Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science and spirituality with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. Today, we welcome Dr. Tom Cohen to Skeptico. Tom is the author of, showing it here on the screen, a Simon & Schuster book, mind you, The Contagion Myth why viruses, including coronavirus, are not the cause of disease. And this is a book, by the way, you know, if you look down in the corner here, there's a little click button for Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And if you click Amazon, you'll see that the page is not found. This is a book that has been banned on Amazon. Imagine that. I think that's that might be the most interesting part of this story. So the central, the, the central premise of Tom's book, The Contagion Myth, is that coronavirus doesn't exist, which I have to say, when I first heard it during my interview with David Icke, who is someone who I really respect, but I know David doesn't always dig into the science or get the science right, but when I first heard it, it had a real flat earth kind of ring to it. Like, you know, like a reverse conspiracy over the top conspiracy claim. So when one of your representatives, Dr. Cohen pinged me and said, Hey, would you like to have a chat with this guy? I jumped at the opportunity because I think this is really an interesting topic to talk about. So thanks for joining me. Thank you. It's actually, uh, just a few corrections. It's Cowan, not Cohen. But you Did I say Co I, I keep saying that. I, yeah, it's Cohen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Cowan. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you can call me Cohen. Tom. That'll make it easier. I um, will. The other Tom. thing, just as a note, it, it was that actually published by Simon and Schuster. It was published by a company called Skyhorse, and I think Simon and Schuster is technically the distributor, not the publisher. Okay. Well, I, I just think it's fascinating that Simon and Schuster is put their name on the book and yet it's a book that's been banned by Amazon I think that's amazing but I do have to say I mean just kind of right to it the central premise that coronavirus hasn't been isolated in a lab is just I mean you're not serious about that, are you? I mean, that's just kind of flat earth thing. I got so many, I can show you some of the... So, so let, me, uh, let me start that, if I would, by, um, <clears throat> if I can just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, go I ahead. If I can respond to that. Uh, I, and I'll tell you how this came about, if you want. But let me just read from... Um, this was a January 2020 CDC bulletin on basically make a testing for, um, sorry, this was a published, sorry, this was published in European Surveillance, which is a, a major European epidemiology journal. And they say, quote, this is January 2020, quote, the ongoing outbreak of recently emerged novel coronavirus poses a challenge to public health laboratories as virus isolates are unavailable. Uh, further, they say in, in the problem of, of developing a test, because these virologists were tasked with developing a test for this virus, 
And again, let me quote from the actual study. This is in peer reviewed uh, scientific literature. Quote, we aim to develop and deploy robust diagnostic methodology for use in public health laboratory settings without having virus material available. In other words, they were tasked and they spoke about the challenge of developing a test when they actually didn't have any virus available to make a test for. And I can imagine that that was in fact challenging because if somebody said, I want you to make a test for a unicorn, it would be nice to at least see the unicorn. Now, that's not the only one because in the um, CDC bulletin from 2020, now we're talking July, so this is later. This is the CDC, and again, I'll quote, since no quantified virus isolates of this 2019 SARS-CoV-2 virus are currently available. In other words, that's the CDC saying, we have no isolates, we have never isolated, purified, and seen this virus. So I, I could go on because a group of, of, of us who've been working on this actually um, emailed and communicated with the six uh, top uh, articles that say they isolated and characterized and purified the virus. And in writing, all of them admitted that they never actually isolated and purified the virus in writing. So those are simply the facts, and I can tell you how we got there if you want, but I'll let you sort of guide the conversation here. Okay. Well, this guy, who I thought was interesting because he's from the University of Saskatchewan, and I like saying Saskatchewan, so I use him, but he's also one of the top virologists in the world. And, you know, Daryl, what's his name? Falzorano. Falzorano. He's up there in Saskatchewan. So he isolated the virus. But more importantly, like in 2016. Uh -huh. I doubt that he isolated the virus. If okay. he did, he should immediately let the CDC know that he did that because well, the CDC is under the impression that they actually have never isolated the virus. Well, I, I don't think, there he is in his lab. I don't think he's keeping it a secret. Well, then I, mean, he, I can tell you, uh, I could re review his paper and demonstrate that, in fact, he couldn't possibly have isolated this virus. There we go. There we go. I love it. So you realize this is a guy published in Nature, obviously one of the top science journals in the world, in 2016, mind you, on his work. He's a virologist. And, you know, Part of the reason, I guess, why he got pulled into the COVID thing is he did all this work with camels. Strangely enough, you know, there's all these viruses in animals that sometimes cross over. And there's all these viruses in these camels that are, look like the SARS. So he was over there studying that for years and years. He's an expert. He has a lab like this, and he has all these people in his lab. And the idea that he is so grossly incompetent, which would really be, we would have, you know, you guys up there in Canada, like Matt, we could go sue this guy, probably make millions, if he is falsely claiming that he got the material, which he said was very difficult to get at the beginning, and then he isolated the virus. If he's falsely making that claim, gosh, let's go at him. But again, it just doesn't seem likely that this guy in this lab published in nature woke up one day and kissed his wife goodbye and said okay now i'm going to go falsify a bunch of science that i built my whole reputation and my whole life on so Doesn't all seem i can very tell likely. you is uh again we have the six most important papers all of which claim they isolated and purified the sars cov 2 virus some of them were published in nature and new england journal of medicine and my team actually emailed them because we could tell from the paper that there was no possible way they isolated the virus. All you have to do is actually, because I could describe if you want, how we isolate and demonstrate a purified virus. It's very clear that they didn't do that. The reason they didn't do it is because they changed the rules. 
So whether he's deliberately doing that or not, I don't know. But they all admitted publicly and in writing, which you could tell from the, from the papers, that they didn't, couldn't possibly have isolated and purified the virus. Just, well, what did, what did Daryl say when you, uh, when you talked to him? I don't remember whether we talked to him or not. I don't remember if he was the lead author of one of these six papers. But well, he, he's they, one they of the top. The, same thing all the, the idea, time. the i, the idea that there's these vir virologists, professional virologists. Like I say, but let, let me interrupt been... you here because if we're going to be talking about who said what, then this conversation is not going to be productive. If we want to talk about the science and how a virologist demonstrates isolation and purification, then your listeners might learn something. If you want to try to ask me why he's doing what he's doing, I have no idea because I've never talked to the guy. Yeah, but the point is, he's saying you're full of crap. He's saying, I why? got a sample, I isolated the virus. He's even saying that since he does work with animals, that he then, you know, injected the virus that he isolated into a certain species of monkeys, which I don't know how I feel about that, but these monkeys then demonstrated all the symptoms of COVID. So no, he's, he's no, I saying- I can tell from just this, looking at this highlight that you're putting there, that his, his way of isolating is using surrogate markers which are completely invalid, as anybody who understands the science would know. So this guy doesn't understand the science, that's what you're saying? He, he has a misconception. So this and guy... Exactly why he has a misconception, if you want. If you don't want, you can just stay with an argument about who's right, and then nobody will get anywhere. Well, the, Tom, Dr. Tom, that's what this is. It's an argument about who's right. And you're claiming you're right. And this guy's claiming he's right. So I don't know how we would break it down any other way. But this guy who I published- I tell you how to break it down. This guy who- No, this is how science is done. That's why virologists say, we got this thousands of virologists around the world who study this stuff. Why are these people claiming that none of these folks know what they're doing? Or you're claiming they're all part of some conspiracy, which, hey, the, the, the reason I'm concerned about this is there are some really legitimate questions about how this COVID thing has been rolled out, the science behind it, how it's used to prop it up. And I am really, really concerned about the way science has been mishandled on the COVID thing. But this idea that they haven't isolated the virus, I mean, flat earth stuff. I think we're at an impasse here. Okay, probably. Impasse indeed. I'm gonna cut it off there. And I do want to thank Dr. Tom Cowan for joining me today on Skeptico. I think it's great that he was willing to come on and, and talk about this stuff. And I'm certainly supportive of him having that opportunity. I can't believe that Amazon banned his book. You know, later we talked about that. He's had other best-selling books on Amazon. I don't care what you think of this guy's interpretation of this science. We have reached an absolute new level within this cancel culture where people aren't up in arms that they're banning books. Just unbelievable. But the other point, I guess, that I would rant on, and I probably will rant on in future episodes because it's going to be coming up again and again, is this flat earth science thing. And one of the advantages I think I have in going through the drill in, with Skeptico from the beginning, from Jump Street with Dean Radin and that phony baloney Yale neurologist skeptic, Dr. Steve Novella. Do you remember one of the very first episodes of Skeptico where they, him and Dr. Ray Hyman from Oregon, since deceased, were laughing about Dean Radin and laughing about his work and laughing about his published research. And I remember I told you at the time, and I told you in the first book that I wrote that I, I, I'm interviewing these guys and I'm like, 
oh shit, they're right. And Dean Radin must be wrong. Because no way they'd be laughing at this guy's science. The point is, if you're not always on that edge of doubting whether or not this edgy science, this frontier science is right or wrong, then I don't think you're really in the game. But the flip side of that, in my opinion, is this, Dr. Tom Cowan, you haven't proven it to me. No, Tom, the job is for you to prove it to us. If you believe against all common sense and logic that this virus hasn't been isolated, even though they're spending billions and billions of dollars developing a vaccine, which would be impossible if they hadn't isolated the virus, and even though they're competing not only within uh, these multinational big pharma companies, but they're competing with other countries like China has a vaccine, Russia has a vaccine. They're all trying to get a leg up on the other ones to get a competitive advantage. All that is dependent on the idea that they have successfully isolated the virus at the very minimum. So if you're going to go against that, if you're going to be uh, Tom Cowan, if you're going to be a quacky Andrew Kaufman, and you're going to stand up and say that, you can't do this flat earth thing where you say, oh, well, prove it to me. Prove it to my satisfaction that you've isolated the virus. No, you prove it to us. You stand up like Dean Radin stood up and do... 20, 30 experiments, publish them in peer-reviewed journals, get other labs to replicate it, get other people with inside the community to support your work. Forget this flat earth, you got to prove it to me because I can't see it, this extreme empiricism. It's just a joke. And I feel like I need to point it out. I did another interview with Matt Belair, who was kind of riding shotgun in this one, but didn't say much. And I'll kind of point you to that in the notes and you can see it. It's just kind of one of my personal little crusades here because I think there's so many interesting, real, hard conspiratorial questions regarding COVID. But this notion that they haven't isolated the virus, to me, that seems like, it just seems like a psyop to me. It just, unknowingly, I mean... Cowan doesn't know it's a PSYOP. Kaufman doesn't know it's a PSYOP. But they're letting that idea out there just to divide the conspiratorial community, if you will, into thinking flat earth bullshit. Okay, that's a long rant. I never usually do these, but I felt it necessary in this case. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. I'm dying to hear. Otherwise, stick around. I got some more good skepticos coming up. They won't all be like this one. Take care. Bye for now.